instruments and music um, that we've just seen and heard. Um, so I'm going to begin with a poem called Mercy River, which is from my pamphlet at Kismet. Um, and this poem is a homage to my paternal grandfather, who was um, a seaman on the Blue Funnel Line, which was a famous shipping company, um, which was founded in 1865 by Alfred Holt and brought many Chinese seamen to Liverpool. Mercy River. Listen, some shattering in the void of my form. I hear your song, born on the cry of a seagull. The river flows, entranced by the sea's operatic language which beguiles a geography of otherness. This otherness becomes me. I move towards the coastline, clasping mementos from my grandfather. A Chinese passport, papers from the blue funnel line, photographs in sepia, grandmother's jade pendant, translucent white green. Blemished sea shapes rise and dissipate, twist and untwist. Speckles split the coastline. Beyond waste chemicals, breaking stabilities on the scour like phonetic entities. One pulse through the murky field. Alluvium burns. Listen. I want to hear you speak to me. I do not want the city to forget you or the other sailors of Chinatown. My next poem is the first poem in my pamphlet and it's called Self-Portrait at Four Years Old. I am the smallest one in class, the only oriental at a primary school in Birkenhead. At four years old, I learned to read better than a child twice my age. My first school uniform, grey cardigan knitted by an aunt, grey skirt, grey like an English sky, yellow and brown tie. Shiny clock shoes bought by my grandfather with money made by washing dishes in a restaurant kitchen. In the playground, I hear something I don't understand, an occasional refrain. Chinese, Japanese, don't forget to wash your knees. First school photo, mother reminds me to smile for the camera. I don't tell her that I never feel like smiling at school. I am learning to be silent. I am learning how to keep secrets. I am learning how to be alone. At home, I read fairy tales with my mother. Goldilocks and the Three Bears, Rapunzel, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Only Snow White has black hair. Her eyes are brown like mine, but her skin is white. What colour is my skin, Mama? I listen to nursery rhyme records on my father's turntable. Bar bar black sheep, have you any wool? Yes sir, yes sir, three bags full. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Back from the casino, father laments my love of books, my pleas to buy them every week. Because in Cantonese, the word for a book sounds like the verb to lose. I put on my best smile for the camera. It's called You Said. 
You said you'd seen me a few nights before in the crazy house. You were glad I'd come up and spoken to you. Our meeting was a kind of kismet. On the dance floor, you said you'd once tried to stab yourself, and I didn't believe you. Then you showed me a scar on your chest. You said you'd call, and you did, from a red telephone box, though the money ran out before we said what we wanted to say. You said your last girlfriend was called Rachel. She ran off with some guy to Scotland. A trip, you said. You'd really loved her. You said your brother was schizophrenic and looked like Elvis when he was fat. Kant was your favourite thinker. You rated Plato and Keats. Midnight on New Year's Eve, we sauntered through Princess Avenue, past the synagogue, the deserted Gothic church. Fireworks ignited the indigo sky, revealing the steeple, its pinnacles and roach spire. We shimmied along the grassy strip, and you said you hoped someday there'd be no need for religion. A friend of your sister's said you were very clever, but not quite human. When I told you, you laughed, asked if that made you superhuman, and not to believe a word they said. We were speeding, as if the air was chivying us along. Your arms so tight around me, all day, all night. You said you'd drawn a black and white picture of me the day after we met that it even looked like me. You said being with you gave me a certain air. Now I think maybe it was the other way around. Five years later, your mum said she wanted you to leave the city, get away from that bedlam crowd. She says you'd stepped in front of a train just a few days before, or was it after her birthday? It was January, white with cold. You weren't even 30. Okay, so I'm just going to read a couple more poems. Um, so my next poem is an emphastic poem, which was written as a commission for an exhibition of photographs called Shanghai Sacred. Um, which showed last year in the Victoria Gallery Museum in Liverpool. And so these photographs focused on um, the varieties of religions in Shanghai. And the particular photograph that I wrote about um, showed a modern bridge um, in a darkened room of a Taoist temple. And according to Taoist belief, objects such as this um, modern bridge um, eased the deceased's passage into the next life. And the poem is called Ritual Bridge, White Clouds Monastery. There is a stillness we can reach at the end of one breath and the brink of the next. Hold out and we'll be there soon. See how the shades of the flowers in the vase intensify with our gaze as we fade into nothingness, become something else. Sunlight radiates into the cracks of the room as we cross over to the other side of the red bridge. Step lightly, this journey must be taken alone. Who knows what we will see in that other place? And my last poem is inspired by one of my strongest childhood memories. Um, and this was at the age of four, um, being on holiday um, on the island of Jersey my parents. And so growing up and being born in the UK with my Chinese heritage meant that I was lucky to have access to two languages, um, 
cultures and in some ways identities. But I think at some point in my early linguistic development, English must have taken over. And um, so this poem explores that point of linguistic disruption. And it's called <coughs> Wild Ponies. An emerald field in Jersey. Sunlight, birdsong, the solid presence of trees. My mother, her black mist of hair. Softly, softly she speaks. Her face delicate as cherry blossom. Wild ponies <coughs> chew the grass. My mother holds me in her arms. We are part of each other. I want to be like my mother, never separate in our attachment. We murmur to each other in Cantonese. We approach the ponies and she kneels to bring me closer to them. I am so afraid, such huge, handsome creatures. I bury my face in her chest and can't look at them. The sky is so blue, there are no clouds, but the wind blows. I am losing my mother tongue. I cannot tell my mother how I fear the animals. I sense their tempestuousness, their untamed natures, how they can't be controlled. The splitting of myself into two halves. My tiny self floats off into the ether like a brightly coloured kite, tethered to nothing and no one. My English self is speechless, can't articulate itself to my Chinese mother. All around me, fear and beauty descend like petals, blown away to places I do not know yet, to Hong Kong, to China. The ponies rear up, their lurid manes tussle with the wind. Mama, I said. The sound of this word in Cantonese means both mother and horse, depending on its tone. Did I say it the right way? Horses are such auspicious animals. In the Book of Changes, a horse symbolizes heaven, a king, the father. Horse, gallop across the battlefield. Lung ma, dragon horse. Ti ma, heavenly horse. And I fall. I fall into the emerald fire. Thank you so much for listening.